Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm Leon Cloud Crypto, and today we'll be comparing uh, Ethereum and Cardano. So, to start things off, let's just uh, go ahead and look at the price. Um, this is um, Cardano versus Ethereum, and recently we've seen that uh, the price of Cardano has been kind of breaking out against Ethereum. So, um, just in the past couple weeks, we've seen that there's been um, a higher low and a higher high. So um, it peaked up here, and the bottom here ha um, got higher. Anyways, I'm not a technical analysis guy. I can't really say words. They're hard to do. But um, generally, I'm pretty bullish um, on Ethereum in terms of the price, just based off um, the way this looks right now. Um, so from bottom to bottom, top to top. Whatever, I'm not even gonna try with that. It's too difficult. <laughs> um, but anyways, let's look at smart contracts. So why are we making this comparison between Cardano and Ethereum? Um, here is a little infographic. Uh, I'll have a link for it below if you're interested in looking at it yourself. Let's just go ahead and read this. Um, if you're already familiar with smart contracts and uh, with Ethereum and Cardano, you might want to skip ahead. Um, if you scroll, I mean, if you look below, you can see I have timestamps on everything. Okay, so what are smart contracts? Um, well, I'll start off with the, how Vitalik, the creator of Ethereum, described it, because he did a really good job. So Vitalik described it as, um, it's like a vending machine. You put money in and candy comes out. Uh, a vending machine is a physical device that executes the rules of agreement, but a vending machine can, can be broken. By digitalizing the concept, uh, cryptography makes these contracts far more secure and powerful. Um, so if you think about a vending machine, you have a certain input, right? And then you get um, out what you want. So the vending machine has candy, you want that candy, so you enter the code, you give it your money, and then you get um, the candy you want. So smart contracts are like that. It's just a digital form version of that. Um, so let's, let's go through this. I'll read it just so everyone can get a really good idea. So what is a smart contract? Um, also known as smart property, smart contracts are computer protocols that facilitate, verify, or enf enforce the negotiations or performance of a contract or that make a contractual clause unnecessary. Smart contracts often mirror the logic of contractual clauses. So if you think about entering into an agreement, you're obligated to um, abide by those rules. So a smart contract is just creating rules for people to use. How do they work? So a traditional contract is an agreement between two people and then there's a third party that um, can verify the contract and that um, can facilitate that contract. The process can be drawn out, there's middleman fees, it's complicated and it, it, relying on a third party re requires a certain amount of trust that you might not have. Um, contracts are binding and enforceable but have to be executed by human input. On the other hand, smart contracts. Um, let's say someone wants to sell a product and they identify with a public key. The terms of the contract and sign with her um, can be done with a private key. Tom wants to buy, a, buy that product. He can also sign it with his private key, and he can transfer um, the address to her uh, to her public address. Um, so basically, neither of them really need to do any work. The third party is just this automated, verified um, computer algorithm. So they both get what they want. It's both instantaneous and um, easier for both parties. The smart contract is verified by each node on the blockchain network. Um, checking if D, the owner of the product, and if Tom, um, the buyer, has enough money. So you can verify that the owner owns the asset and the buyer has the money. If the network agrees that all conditions are met, um, it should automatically go through. So it's automating contracts, essentially. Um, what makes smart contracts trustworthy? Well, if, um, if Billy, the bandit, steals Tom's product and claims ownership of it, since all transactions are registered on the blockchain, anyone can inspect it. 
And using the unique ID of a product, we can prove Billy is not the owner if Tom is. Um, so I guess, just real quickly, if you want to think about a blockchain like this, um, in the traditional system, if you want to purchase something using your debit card, your bank has to verify that. That's just one entity, and you rely on them very heavily to be uh, correctly identifying all the information going through. But on a blockchain, it's not just one entity. It's not just one third party. It's this whole network of computers all competing to verify the authenticity of your purchase. So it, it creates um, a layer of trust and decentralization. More people verifying in a wider network. Okay, so this is the beginner's guide to Ethereum. We will look at uh, Cardano next, but let's start with Ethereum. Um, here's an introduction. Uh, developers have begun using uh, Bitcoin's underlying technology, the blockchain, for creative new applications. Ethereum is a next generation platform that allows anyone, both developers and consumers, to easily take advantage of decentralized networks and realize the benefits of blockchain technology. So, um, Ethereum is using a blockchain to build on top of it. So what Ethereum is, so what Bitcoin is doing for money, Ethereum is doing that for contracts, essentially, or for everything, right? For everything else. What are decentralized networks? A decentralized network is um, a redistribute func. Decentralized networks redistribute functions and powers away from a central server, uh, enabling peer-to-peer -peer communication. So the advantages are that there's no central point of failure, it's highly reliable, and it's very cost-effective. Um, BitTorrent, used uh, for file sharing, is, is an example of a decentralized network, right? So they're um, intentionally very difficult to, um, to legally attack them because there's no centralized entity. It's just a group of computers all contributing to a network. Um, and it's very scalable and there's no central point of failure. So if you think about the internet, the internet, you can't just attack the internet, right? Because it's a network, um, there's no real single point of failure. And so this is kind of just uh, bringing that process to um, financial contracts, to, to everything. Um, the blockchain, most networks function using a central author authority to make fi final decisions. The blockchain, a type of decentralized network, is able to make agreements across the whole network without any central authority. So removing middlemen, decentralize the process, make it um, provably fair. Enter Ethereum. Ethereum's vision is a decentralized internet. Um, by creating a platform where applications can be built and run on a de decentralized network, Ethereum is a fast and flexible without the internet limitations um, of the Bitcoin protocol. So you think of Ethereum as a world computer. What Bitcoin does for payments, Ethereum does for anything and can be programmed. And then um, the reason Ethereum is valuable is because you use Ethereum to power the network. Not only are you building everything on top of Ethereum, but to, to pay for transactions, transactions, you must do it in Ethereum. Um, this goes on. Uh, we don't need to read the rest. Um, hopefully you get a pretty good idea of what Ethereum is. Um, so let's compare Cardano and Ethereum. Uh, they were both um, created around the same time. I believe Cardano, the you could first buy tokens in 2017. Um, the, the consensus mechanism is maybe the biggest difference. Well, there's lots of differences. Um, so Cardano already has proof of stake and Ouroboros, um, while Ethereum is still running on proof of work. Proof of work is... Um, kind of bad for the environment because you have to run a bunch of computers 24 7 at maximum capacity So they're using a bunch of electricity to authenticate the network or proof of stake. I'm um, just running a node um, There's no competition. I mean there you're not Constantly wasting power. I mean you're running the network, but you're doing it in a way that um, is less el electricity intensive um, There's a lot of other things you can talk about. I don't really know what I'm talking about I'm just saying that there are two different things um, Ethereum is working to proof of stake, so Cardano is already there. So in that sense, Cardano is already ahead. Um, in terms of transactions per second, Cardano has upwards of 200, 257, while Ethereum only has 15. So Ethereum's a bit slower. Um, the market value, though, the market value is like is where Ethereum really shines because uh, Ethereum already has 44 billion um, worth of value, while Cardano is only 3.2 billion. Um, and then, of course, the teams behind it. 
Cardano has um, input output global and or as they used to be known as input output Hong Kong. Um, while Ethereum has the Ethereum Foundation. Um, oh yeah, and uh, Ethereum has 113 million in circulation with no hard cap, so there is potentially an infinite supply. While Cardano has uh, 31 billion of the 45 billion total in supply, so 69% of Cardano is already in circulation. So take that as you will. I I, I think Cardano is pretty bullish in terms of circulating supply and. In terms of comparison, I'm already starting to give Cardano a bit of an advantage just because they already have proof of stake and because they have more transactions. Um, yeah, let's go into some of the details. So total value of all Ethereum assets surpasses a staggering 100 billion. So this is um, all the coins, all the ERC-20 tokens, all the NFTs, all the ERC-720s, you know, all everything. Everything built on top of Ethereum is worth about a hundred billion. So this is why Ethereum has so many competitors because everybody wants to be the um, cryptocurrency or the blockchain that everything's built on top of. Um, and this is um, this is the total value locked up. I think um, this is not including Ethereum. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm just saying there's a lot built on top of Ethereum right now. Um, so what about the future of Ethereum? So this is Ethereum right now. There's a lot of stuff built on it, a lot of stuff using Ethereum, but what about Ethereum in the future? Well, Ethereum 2.0 is a long planned upgrade to the Ethereum network, giving it the, the scalability and security it needs to serve all of humanity. The first stages of Ethereum 2 called phase zero is planned to launch in 2020. So they're currently doing a bunch of test networks and they're working up to the um, official launch so while they have they're getting through a lot of the kinks some people are uncertain about whether ethereum 2.0 like how soon it's coming out right so um ethereum 2 will reduce energy consumption allow the network to process more transactions and increase security um ethereum will become a proof of stake blockchain and introduce shard chains this is a huge chance um to change to how ethereum works and it should bring equally huge benefits but it's only a change to ethereum's infrastructure if you're already an ethereum holder dap user or dap developer you don't need to do anything because ethereum 2 will be compatible with the main ethereum network so it's going to be completely backwards backwards compatible so anyone using ethereum right now will automatically transition to ethereum 2.0 i believe or it, it should it shouldn't affect you the user um, so yeah, that's Ethereum right now. Um, here's a proposal for that could drastically change the um, tokenomics of Ethereum. So there is a proposal to make Ethereum a deflationary token, which um, which is currently being discussed. Um, there's advantages and disadvantages. You know, there's always a whole bunch of like security and the the you don't know how it's gonna work out. So there's a lot to talk about. Um, but basically, this would mean that uh, if they had implemented this proposal, um, nearly 1 million Ethereum would have been burnt in the past year. So there'd be a million less Ethereum in existence. And going forward, it would make the price go up a lot. And basically, um, yeah, it would mean less money going to the miners and more money going to the holders. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. I don't really know if they're going to implement this too soon. Um, the reason being is that there is a huge monetary incentive for um, the computer chip makers. So people that are running the um, Ethereum network are constantly buying new computers and new processors to um, outcompete their competitors to run a bigger supply of the network. And so because the miners are making so much money from like uh, gas fees and from you know receiving ethereum they don't want to change they have a strong monetary incentive to keep the network how it is right now so transitioning to ethereum 2.0 is very difficult going forward um one of the reasons i don't like ethereum or that i favor cardano over ethereum is the fact that uh, making these changes the updates to the network are difficult there are people who have very very strong monetary incentives to keep ethereum exactly how it is now um, so yeah, even though this might be what's best for the network, it might not be what, uh, happens going forward. 
if it's not profitable for current, you know, for people who are benefiting the most from Ethereum right now. Um, okay, looking at Ethereum's distribution, we can see that uh, Ethereum is very similar to Bitcoin in terms of distribution. So percentage of top wallets, we can see that the top 100 wallets own 20, 26% of the um, total Ethereum supply. And then the top 1000 wallets own 42% of the total Ethereum in circulation. And then the top 1000 wallets own 57% of the total Ethereum. So that's actually a pretty good distribution. Um, for comparison, uh, the top 16 XRP addresses hold 55% of all of XRP. Um, and then for Bitcoin Cash, the top 1000 hold 56%. Um, for Bitcoin SV, the top 1,000 addresses hold 55%. Um, and then it goes on and goes on. Um, so Ethereum is pretty well distributed. Um, it, it's it's very, very comparable to Bitcoin. Bitcoin's top 10K holders own 57% of the total Bitcoin supply. So that distribution is pretty good. Okay, looking at uh, Cardano. Cardano's roadmap. So Cardano um, has gone through several processes. Um, it has not been progressing very fast. So a lot of people will complain that Cardano is just taking forever or that no progress is happening. Um, but that's not true. I think they're just putting a lot of effort into um, the quality of work. Um, so they have the foundation. They're going through decentralization. So the Shelly has been launched. Um, and right now they're working on Gogan. Um, Gogan smart contracts. Um, let me just read the Shelley a bit about the Shelley. Um, following on from the Byron Byron era, the Shelley era of Cardano is a period of growth and development for the network. Unlike the Byron era, which began at a single point in time where the mainnet was launched, the Shelley transition the transition to Shelley is designed to achieve a smooth, low risk transition without service interruptions. Okay, so they are working up to smart contracts. They're working up to scaling. And then eventually they're going to work up to governance. Um, I see I see the governance and scaling as a really strong argument for Cardano because they have thing they have scaling and governance already. Like this is already the strong points of Cardano is the fact that the the network itself um, it already has more transactions per second and it already has more governance than Ethereum in my opinion. Um, so here is a quote, or this is from taken from a coin telegraph article. I just want to read it. One of the main distinguishing points of Cardano's development approach is its emphasis on research first. Um, th though there have recently been, uh, a new crop of what Huskinson's calls science coins, such as Algorand, um, and Starkware. When Cardano was starting out, this approach was radically unorthodox. To this day, the approach often attracts criticism for being too academic, academically pen, pedantic and slow. However, Hoskinson's believes that it will allow Cardano to shine in the future. So my whole argument for academic rigor is it's not just about today, it's about tomorrow in two different respects. It's about tomorrow from the respect that we can get protocols that can scale to billions of users and there are no protocols in the world right now that allow us to do that so they have to be designed um and then two who will come up with the protocols five years from now 10 years from now 15 years from now um are we always going to have the genius founder around no okay so he's saying that cardano is thinking about the future all the time they're really, right now, they're not supposed to be. The, the market cap of Cardano to Ethereum makes sense because Ethereum already has a product. They already have a bunch of stuff built on top of Ethereum, right? They have this. Um, but Cardano isn't, isn't looking to compete with them at this level right now. What they're looking to do is to jump ahead of them, right? By, by scaling better and by having better governance, they're going to, um, in the future, be a better product. Okay, this is going over five lessons in blockchain governance. I won't go over all of them. I just want to read um, this first part. Um, we knew that Cardano, the community, was crucial to realizing the full potential of Project Catalyst. Project Catalyst is their um, 
governance structure so people can make proposals um, and get their ideas voted upon if the community wants and then they can get funded and they can start working on it so it's a strong incentive for the community to partake and to be involved in the what's happening in cardano so but we did not fully realize okay so i'm going to continue reading but we did not fully realize the depth or the expertise oh, of the expertise available nor its true global reach when we called for ideas for the project people responded to date Project Catalyst has drawn 3,000 registered users, 500 perspectives, 126 proposals, and 5,000 plus comments from 70 countries around the globe. Building a, um, courses in Haskell engineering and boosting decentralized technology in West Africa. Um, podcasts, blockchain applications, and in many fields are among the ideas patched on the Ideal Scale innovation platform. Furthermore, each one of these has been uh, refined by the Project Catalyst community. So there's a strong community involved here. Um, Cardano has really um, mastered, I mean, not mastered, but they really do a good job incorporating the community. So the community has feedback. The Cardano team or developers can create technology processes, um, dApps or whatever. And then with those tools and experiments, it benefits the community. So there's a positive feedback loop here where the bigger the community gets and the more developers that come on board, the more, I mean, just the more product we get, right? There's a, a huge incentive to be involved in the community because you're going to get better technology and processes, right? You're going to get a better product. Um, all right. So let's look at the distribution of Cardano. Um, if we look here, oh, let me reset that. If we look at the top 10K wallets for Cardano, I think it makes up less than 20% of the total Cardano in circulation. Um, I think so. I'm not totally accurate. Um, yeah, it looks about 20% on here. But I think Cardano is one of the most well-distributed cryptocurrencies around. Um, so each, each little bit of um, each cross-section, each bit of this cross-section is very, is very well evenly uh, distributed. So there's not one section that makes up the majority, right? Um, yeah, I'm very, very impressed by how well distributed this network is. And I think going forward, it's going to become even better, more decentralized. Um, okay, we're, we're, reaching the, we're reaching the end of this video. Let's just read this one, uh, this tweet from Input Output. Ouroboros, a provably secure proof-of-stake blockchain protocol by IOHK, uh, has made it to the top most cited security papers from 2015 to 2019. So this shows us that their goal of being a research oriented uh, project is working out because Google Scholar metrics rank it as an honorary second place uh, for cryptocurrencies and blockchain category. So it's one of the most cited papers in research in uh, science journals. And this is the whole point of Cardano was to be research oriented so this means that they're being very successful at what they set out set out for themselves um all right that's it for this video i hope you got some value out of that thank you for watching and have a wonderful day